Yo, what's going on YouTube? We back with another video. I ain't gonna lie, I do be reacting to stuff for real. Like, I really do. Because a lot of y'all probably don't even be giving a fuck about, like, no shit that I be reacting to. I don't care, though. I'm getting a video out regardless. It's gonna get some type of views. No matter if it's one, two, three, four, five. It don't matter. We got 12 superheroes Spider-Man has defeated. And I was gonna watch this by myself. But I'm like, I could just make this a video and get views. That's about it. Let's get on to the video. Doing what I'm supposed to. Why you at the brand new? Girl, I want the old you. All these hoes in my DM, but somehow I chose you. I could tell the sun is wrong. Girl, you know I need. Yeah, I know the the um the TikTok stream is um is faster. The TikTok stream is way faster than uh, the YouTube. Like, I know that for a fact. But yeah, we on this. Spider-Man has fought oh, shit, some my amazing on. rogues over the years, but what happens when Spidey trades blows with some of your other famous superheroes? Chaos ensues, that's what. <laughs> Due to the nature of comics and other media, Marvel heroes are fighting each other almost as much as they fight bad guys. And Imagine something fighting that shouldn't your fellow be surprising brethren, that's is that Spider-Man has nearly beaten them all. That's right, join me today as I talk about all the superheroes that Spider-Man has defeated over the years. How did Spider-Man outwit Iron Man? And did Spidey really punch Hulk into space? Well, let's find out all that and more right now. Punch Hulk into space? I want to start off with a recent live-action example. I didn't, I didn't mean to keep that on there. Yes, that of course refers to Spider-Man No Way Home that featured a lengthy sequence that pitted the former Sorcerer Supreme against Spider-Man. This fight is just awesome to look at, but I think it highlights a key component of Spider-Man's fighting style that makes him one of the most formidable foes around. Yeah, the kid is head. smart. Yes, he can pack yeah. one heck of a punch, but he also uses reasoning and logic to solve problems and defeat bro, enemies. Always get so your name yes, right, let's bro. talk about Spidey versus Strange. I know we've all seen the movie about 40 times now, so we all know what happens, but there's a few little moments I want to break down. At first, Doctor Strange just seems way too overpowered. He can limit Spider-Man's mm -hmm. movements using portals and his cape, and he has a whole range of spells that should be able to end the fight instantly. Like his whole, I'm gonna punch you into the astral plane power. But something surprising happens. When Peter is separated from his body, Strange is baffled about how Peter's body is still able to evade and dodge him. Peter doesn't know what's happening either, and while this is a funny moment, it has a much bigger implication. We can infer that it's his spidey sense that's able to keep Peter's body moving even when his soul thing isn't. And that gives him a major Yo, advantage good, over lovely. Strange. The next phase of the fight lonely, takes place in the mirror stuff. dimension, which Dr. Strange says he has complete mastery of. And yet, he still can't steal one box from one teenager. And then, Peter is able to turn the tables again on Strange using math to figure out where exactly to place his webbing. That's one of my favorite parts Dr. of the movie, Strange is when he was fighting Dr. Strange. Until the Strange. end of the movie oh, needs to get away from And yes, you could argue that Dr. Strange Yo, good looking for the gift. Really trying in this situation. I mean, after gift, he's webbed up, he just kind of looks a little frustrated, but I think that also speaks to why Spider-Man can win a lot of fights against heroes. It's because he's so likable. Even though Peter made mistake after mistake in No Way Home, there's just an inherent factor within Tom Holland's puppy dog performance that makes you want to help the kid out. So if you combine all these factors, meaning his smarts, his spider sense, his likability, and his natural agility, and you got yourself a hero who defeated probably the most powerful sorcerer in the universe. Not too shabby. I don't think anyone would want to fight the Hulk. How much no, money would it take someone to offer you in order to that. step into the ring with the Hulk for 15 seconds? That's, that's I mean, it's a trick question because no matter what you amount you're offered, no way Tell you're walking out. away. Unless you try to sneakily remember Black Widow's lullaby or something. Anyway, the point is the Hulk is almost unbeatable, and on a normal day, I think he'd crush Spider-Man into spider goo. But there's one specific instance in the comics where Spider-Man has the upper hand. So during this time, Hulk was mostly Grey Hulk meaning he'd turn into Grey Hulk at night and then during the day revert back to Bruce Banner. Very werewolf. And know much someone about. hires Hulk to go after Spider-Man. Easy Andrew so Garfield far, right? Was well, actually, the no. worst one. Like, out of the three, out of Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, to and Andrew like Garfield, his, his was the worst. I still have, meaning he can whip and move them around. Look, what, what I feel about, what I feel like when it comes to them three is... Toby Maguire, he played a good Peter Parker. Andrew Garfield played a good Spider-Man. 
but Tom Holland is just good all around. A good Spider-Man, a good Peter Parker, he's just good all around. That's how I feel about it. That's why I think that his was the best iteration of Spider-Man out of all of them. That's that's why I feel like that. So that's just how it is. His mind. He could alter the molecular structure of anything he touches, meaning he could change his webbing into adamantium. It also saw a major uptick in Spidey's strength, with Hulk even asking Spidey at one point if he's been working out. Well, the whole fight basically ends when Spider-Man literally punches Grey Hulk into space, and then he sort of feels bad about the whole thing because Hulk would probably not survive staying up there too long, especially with the sun coming out and about to turn him back to Bruce Banner. So Spidey tests his ability by jumping up into into space and bringing Hulk back down. Hulk is actually a little grateful for Spidey saving him and decides to leave the fight. So remember kids, the best way to solve your problems is to become strong enough to punch them into outer space. I didn't even know Spider-Man was It's that pretty unfortunate that we'll never get to see Spider-Man I mean, fight Iron Man in the MCU. Space. Yes, the two are the bestest of buds, but it's always interesting to see mentor mentee fights on the big screen. And unless Tony Stark returns as an evil version of himself from a different universe, which please make it happen MCU, then the two won't be trading blows in live action anytime soon, Tom which Vettico. is a shame because I find their comic fights always so interesting. Like, take their Civil War fight, for instance. It's Iron Man versus the Iron Spider. And although it first seems like Iron Man has the advantage because he literally designed the Iron Spider suit and put in a failsafe that would allow him to shut down the suit by voice command, Tony is actually caught by surprise when- You honestly are correct by saying that Tobey Maguire most definitely is overrated. Like, most definitely is overrated. But he's not a bad Spider-Man. Like, Spider-Man 2 was one of the, if not, it's probably the best Spider-Man movie to ever come out. Spider-Man 2, I'm not gonna lie. That movie was damn near perfect in terms of, like, you know, the development of Spider-Man. Like, that movie was amazing. But, it's, you know, first Spider-Man was okay, and Spider-Man 3 was dog shit. Um, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Mans, I feel like they just were just kind of poorly written. And that wasn't really Andrew Garfield's fault. Because everybody likes to, they were trying to blame him for a lot of, like, things that went wrong. But it wasn't his fault. It was just how the character was written. Like, it really wasn't his fault. And that's just how I feel about that. Tom Holland, everything about his character was just good. Especially the way that they developed him in the MCU to how he's going to be in the future. And how, like, it's just, his was just perfect. Like, perfect Peter Parker, perfect Spider-Man, perfect. Not perfect, but it's the best, in my opinion, you know? for like everything what's up certified aj when Peter turns the tables and reveals that he found Tony's failsafes and implemented a voice command that allowed him to override Tony's commands so Peter could control the suit himself. It was an instance of Peter outwitting one of the I smartest know, people know. in the Marvel Universe, so I that mean, was cool. Care, then there was another time when a street clothes Peter mistake. fought a fully armored Iron Man and actually won. Basically, Peter jumps on Iron Man when he's flying and they crash to the ground. And while Iron Man is basically blasting Peter with his most powerful repulsor beam and blinds him, Peter Peter wildly unleashes all of his webbing in Iron Man's direction without looking. When he opens his eyes to see what happened, he finds what? himself standing in front of a completely cocooned Iron Man. All he can really say in this situation is, wow, which uh, seems crazy. pretty accurate. Although they operate in different <laughs> nah, universes, different. it doesn't mean that Marvel and DC won't cross over from time to time. Usually these are fun one-off adventures that team up oh, Earth's so mightiest heroes with duh. the Justice League for quirky results. And Why I mention this matter? because one time in particular, Spider-Man ended up beating Wonder Woman. Here's the setup. Wonder Woman and Spider-Man were both searching for Doctor Doom. When they cross paths, Doom tries to manipulate Wonder Woman by announcing over the loudspeaker basically how Spider-Man is working for Doom and has been sent to eliminate her. Watching, Although I'm watching 12 superheroes Spider-Man has defeated and... The first one was Doctor Strange, then Hulk, then Iron Man, and this one is um, Wonder Woman that he's talking about right now. Like, if you want to watch the video that I'm watching, I'm streaming, as you can see down here on YouTube, so y'all can watch if y'all want to. Dora beats all of her enemies. You right, I ain't gonna lie, Dora solos everything, bro. Dora literally solos all.
Peter tries to explain himself, Wonder Woman is in a fight first, ask questions later type of move, and the fighting begins. Wonder Woman exclaims that she'll use the lasso of truth to see if Spider-Man is being honest about being a good guy, but Spidey is all like, uh, no way I'm gonna let you ensnare me with a magic rope, and then proceeds to cut the lights and make it pitch black in the room. He then just taps Wonder Woman on the shoulder and explains how if he wanted to, he could have just clobbered her when the lights were off, but didn't. And that technically proves he's a good guy. Wonder Woman's convinced, and overall, I definitely count this as a win for Spider-Man. Oh, he controlled yeah, the situation, that. I knew that. Wonder Woman's I position by controlling the lights, and then had the prime opportunity to attack, but didn't. Have you ever wanted to try out for a team of some sort, and you decide the best way to stand yeah, out is to beat them all up? Damn, no? Oh, okay, then yeah. Peter Parker's plan to join the Fantastic nah, Four was bugging. insane. In Ain't one no of the lie, first lie. actual Spider-Man-centric like stories, started, we see- You start screaming in my face like that, bro, we gonna have to box, bro. And Dora most definitely the Pepper. Nah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Dora, Dora be, be Pepper Pig? I don't know. I don't know. Peppa Pig solos? I don't know. Peppa Pig might solo. I don't know. See Peter Parker in desperate need of some cash. The superhero vigilante business isn't paying the bills and he needs an income. So his first thought is to join the Fantastic Four and start getting paid for his hero work. Peter thinks this is an absolute foolproof plan. You know, even though the group already has four members. Don't worry, he gets smarter as the comics go on. But in this issue, boy, I think the thing was right when he said Spider-Man must have rocks in his head. Peter is absolutely convinced that once he shows up to the Fantastic Four's tower and shows off what he can do, the group will immediately accept him and shower him with cash. Though when he gets to their tower, obviously a fight breaks out. And to his credit, Spider-Man does end up besting all four of the Fantastic Four. He Imagine a 4v1 and all four of y'all get y'all asses whooped. I don't want to like, that's crazy to me, bro. That's actually insane, bro. Webs up Mr. Fantastic to neutralize the stretching ability. Invisible Girl can't stop him because her one advantage doesn't have an effect because of the Spidey sense. And he's able to dance around and dodge any attack by the Human Torch and the Thing. If Peter was an actual assassin and not just a teenager looking for cash, then this could have been a huge problem for the Fantastic Four. Of course, it ends when Peter learns that the Fantastic Four is a non-profit organization and then he just sort of <laughs> leaves. What an awkward That's first crazy. encounter, but it shows how strong Spider-Man can be against a team. Okay, this one isn't about Peter Parker, but rather it's the Miles Morales. Do I think Miles Morales could be Venom? Um, I mean, yeah, Spider Man could be Venom, and, and I'm I feel like Miles Morales is stronger than Peter because he has way more abilities than Peter. Like he can literally electrocute and turn invisible. So yeah, I do think that he could be Venom. Morales version of Spider-Man, but hey, they're both Spider-Man, right? It counts. So although Civil War 2 isn't as beloved as the original Civil War storyline, there's still a lot of interesting stuff within it regarding stopping future crimes before they happen. One of the big events was it was prophesied that Miles Morales would end up eliminating Captain America for good. This, of course, made everyone a bit nervous and on edge, and the events leading up to this were brutal. The gist of what happens is this is a version of Captain America that's evil and has been re made by Hydra using the Cosmic Cube. He ends up viciously eliminating Natasha by bashing her neck in with his shield, and this- Nah, I mean, I knew that, but seeing that again, like, I low-key forgot about this, this timeline where, um, Captain America was evil, and he basically, like, took over, like, the entire America, but, like, that's crazy. That's crazy. This enrages Miles, who had developed a strong bond with Natasha. Miles ends up beating Captain America to a bloody pulp and is about to give in to his worst impulses when he's talked down by Nadia Van Dyne. In the end, Miles decides that Natasha wouldn't want him to eliminate Captain America like this and shows mercy. But from a fight perspective, it wasn't even close. Spider-Man won this fight, so be sure to never make him mad, okay? Whenever the X-Men Bro, look it, it up. Look it up. There was literally in one of the universes, I think... Captain America was a Hydra agent, and he took over the whole America. He, it was in the whole America, he took over the whole world. Monster Machine Solo. I don't even know who Monster Machine is, so I don't even know what y'all talking about right now. 
I have no clue. Get to the MCU, they better hope they don't cross paths with Spider-Man. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because Spidey was able to beat all of them all at once. That's right. Crazy, all isn't it? Once. This happened in Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number three. And the setup is that while the Avengers and the X-Men are working together in the same oh, wait, facility, wait, 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 the X-Men don't feel very welcome. Spider-Man just, just happens to then. eavesdrop on a then. conversation where he hears how the X-Men are What's about up, to leave the Avengers to go join Magneto. Spidey is discovered, and instead of having any chill whatsoever, he claims he's going to rat out the X-Men to the other Avengers. Naturally, a fight up, breaks Ness? out, and surprisingly, Spidey completely dominates in a fight against a whole team of X-Men. That includes Wolverine, Colossus, Storm, Rogue, Nightcrawler, and Professor X. Thanks to equal parts agility and tactics, Spider-Man wipes the floor with the X-Men uh, team, with Wolverine the... even claiming that chilling. they were lucky Spider-Man was just trying to escape and not hurt them, because he made them look like amateurs. So, Wolverine versus Spider-Man in the MCU what when? Another hero Spider-Man has beaten is Spider-Man. Yep, that's what happens when you have so many Spider-Man running around. The first time Peter Parker meets Miles Morales, of course the two fight. Both are confused about what's happening. Miles is thrilled to be meeting Peter Parker, while Peter thinks this might be another clone situation. And while the two are on equal footing in terms of agility and web shooting, Miles is able to bust out one of his signature moves and paralyze Peter for a bit. Of See? I literally was, I literally just told y'all, because you, you, you asked me about if you think that Miles Miles could be Venom. I was like, yeah, because Miles is stronger than him. Like, not really stronger, but like he has more abilities than him. Like, like they're equal probably with strength and agility. But when it comes to like everything else, Miles got it. Like the invisibility really wouldn't work because he still has Spidey sense. But then now he has that thing where he can electrocute people. And as you said, he beat Spider-Man because he paralyzed him with the electricity. Of course, Peter does wake up and strike back, but it's followed by Miles unleashing his whole range of different abilities like his shocking skills and his invisibility. All this adds up to Miles technically winning their first encounter. Now, yes, it is great to watch these two team up in the comics and fight together, but it's arguably more fascinating to watch them fight each other to see their different styles and overall techniques. But yes, again, for the purposes of this list, Spider-Man beats Spider-Man. Sometimes you have to bluff to win. That's what happened when Black Widow first crossed paths with Spider-Man. Now, normally I would say Natasha has no chance against Spider-Man. I mean, although she's she agile and has a ton of tricks up her sleeve, she's still a regular human, whereas Spider-Man has the spider sense oh, nope. and super strength. But luckily, I Natasha know. caught Spider-Man on a bad day. During a time where Peter was really sick and couldn't move like normal, Black Widow showed up wanting to fight in order to test her skills, since she heard Spider-Man was a worthy opponent. Peter is so disoriented that he can't block or anticipate her attacks, leading to Black Widow nearly taking him out and tying him up. Spider-Man makes a last-ditch effort to show strength by breaking out of the constraints and webbing her wrist weapons. Natasha thinks that Spider-Man right, has just been toying with her this whole leave. time and flees, when in sleep. reality Peter was I'm seconds saying, away from collapsing. Saying, See, it's not listening. always about being the strongest, but rather pretending you're the strongest to get your opponent to fold. Although Black Cat toes the line between hero and villain, I think it's fine to include- Yo, I don't know what Pushing P means. I heard it was in a song or whatever. I don't know what Pushing P means. People keep commenting in that in, in my chat. I, I don't know if anybody comments in my YouTube comments, but I keep seeing that where people keep telling me I'm not Pushing P. I don't know what that means. I've never heard the song that Pushing P is in. Like, I don't know what that means. I just placed the wrong button. Include her on this list, especially because her and Spidey have such a steamy history. Black Cat in the comics is a romantic interest for Spider-Man, but you know how it goes. One's a superhero vigilante, the other is a world-renowned cat burglar. It's a star-crossed love that can just never be. Just ask Batman. Anyways, there's a lot of Black Cat stories I can go into where the two tussle and Spidey emerges the victor, but for variety's sake, well. let's talk about video games. Marvel's Spider-Man series is a whole lot of fun and almost is on the same level of PS2 Spider-Man 2. Almost. Anyway, Black Cat plays a supporting role in the games and proves why the character should be introduced in live action. Or, I guess, reintroduced I as why. was... That's one character I will... I don't know why they never put in, in, um, in a live action film is Black Cat. 
don't know. Technically, they, in they Amazing Spider-Man 2, but that movie had like 50 villains to keep track of. So, the video game. We learned that Black Cat started off stealing from rich people, but after falling in love with Spider-Man, she quit the robbery business and became his partner and overall good guy. Yes, it's a little vague given the parameters of this list and topic, but I would say it still counts since he defeated her with the power of love and turned her to the good side, at least temporarily. The airport fight in Captain America Civil War still stands as one of the greatest set pieces in the MCU. Just a bunch of our favorite heroes so fighting each about, other, but also sort of- They probably talk about when he whooped. Um, yo, thank you for the, um, the perfume, uh, and why she made it. Wait, that's it. This nigga Ant is in here doing it, yo. Good looking, bro. But, um, did he, isn't what he, I think he fucked Falcon and the Winter Soldier up at the same time, bro of having a good time? Like, yes, both sides are fighting for what they want, but everyone still has time for quips, which is important. It also served as Spider-Man's big introduction in the MCU. And the kid from Queens really showed up. Yo, he suggested how to topple Giant Man, he impressed Captain America, and he really just completely destroyed a Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That yeah. last fight is one of my favorites. The way he just completely he stops Bucky's up. arm and then acts impressed by it is hilarious. That Followed by so him funny. completely clipping Falcon's wings while simultaneously asking about how they work. Falcon was right, there usually isn't that much talking in a fight. And yes, it technically ends with Falcon using Red Wing to shoot Spidey away from them. But really, Falcon and Winter Soldier end the fight tied up next to each other on the floor, so yeah, all in all, it's clear that Spidey won that fight. I mean, they literally had to web him away, so there's no, like, yeah, he definitely won that fight. Like, hands down. Is also, too... Iron Man definitely beat the shit out of Captain America and with the Soldier too. Just throwing that out there. Is Deadpool a superhero? Uh, maybe if you squint hard enough. He does the right thing most of the time. You know, if someone doesn't offer him a truckload of chimichangas or something to do something evil. Anyways, Spidey and Deadpool's relationship is one of the best things in Marvel comics. Can't send me the video or what? What are you talking about, Jay? Lesbian? What is, what does that mean, Salma? I don't know what that means. Comics and seeing the two quipsters just dig into each other is always such a treat. They've clashed a lot in the comics, so it's hard to pick just one instance where Spider-Man outright won. So for the final entry on this list, I'm picking the time that Spidey and Deadpool got into a Yo Mama contest, and Spidey basically destroyed Wade by saying, Yo Mama's so ugly, she made this, and then ripped off Deadpool's mask for the world to see his disfigured face. That's, Brutal. That's Deadpool was about to counter with the mother of all Yo Mama jokes, but then his timer went off and and his job to try to hurt Spider-Man was over. So in my book, that ends with a Spidey victory. Okay. All right, well, that's it for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. And I really wasn't looking at the camera here because I got comments, like my phone is on top right here. So that's why I was looking most of the time. I still hope y'all enjoyed the video. This video was long as hell and I'm talking way too much. Hope y'all enjoyed. Y'all probably didn't even watch this video at all, but hey, it don't matter to me. I'm making content at the end of the day. And I keep pressing the wrong button.